again, everyone, from Marlboro and the 11th Garrett Reagan Summit, Paul McNamara with My Hockey Live, joined now by uh, the guru, the guy that walks through the halls here, and everybody stops him to ask what's going on in high school hockey this year, Jim Clark, and Clarkie in the slot, in the know, everything going on with high school hockey, but as you just said a few minutes ago, this is, uh, it's like New Year's Day now, there's a lot of unknowns as coaches still haven't made all their cuts, and they're out here with 73 other high school hockey teams today, and it's got to be the biggest jamboree east of the Mississippi. Yeah, it's just crazy how this has grown over the years. Um, you know, 72 teams is the most it's ever been. I think 68 last year was the record. And uh, and I'm actually impressed by the number of girls teams that are here this year. I think there's 10 or 12 of me this year. So so John McGuire and his crew have just, year after year, have just done a tremendous job of, of growing this event and, and, and keeping it alive. And it's a, it's a great event. It's it's not easy to... Uh, to mine for information that everyone wants to find out, but uh, you know we put some mileage on the old shoes and uh, wander around the uh, 217 rinks that are in here now, whatever it is. But uh, the indoor ponds. It's 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 cry. By about three o'clock, I won't know what town I'm in, but that's okay. <laughs> and there's some uh, some good matchups. They try to, you know, the coaches association runs this with uh, the the great leadership of John McGuire, as you said, the coach of Waltham, and and uh, following in the footsteps of Charlie Driscoll, who passed away a couple of years ago and uh, all in honor of Garrett Reagan. But the kids love it, the coaches love it. They see old friends for the first time in a while. But the matchups are interesting because the coaches request whom they want to play. Yep. It's teams they may not play in the regular season. You know, you got MC playing Pope Francis. And they always seem to wind up playing right. each other. But, yep. but other teams, uh, Zavarian and, and Hingham hook up here. Burlington and Marshfield had a good skate. Yep. And uh, other matchups that teams request. And uh, they get to see how kids that maybe in their first varsity outing are going to play against good competition. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, you've, they've been on the ice less than a week, you know, as a, as a team. Um, you know, tr first day of tryouts was last Monday. You know, maybe you go through two or three days of tryouts, you're finally making cuts um, by Wednesday or Thursday of last week. You might have had a scrimmage Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then you come out here and, uh, and you're playing two periods and, uh, you know, under normal game conditions with right. uh, MIA refs on MIA rules. Right. Uh, only two 15-minute periods, but, uh, you know, and, and you're, you know, some of these teams are out here, they're trying to roll, you know, three, four, five lines. They're trying to, trying to get as good a look as they can. So, you know, you can take a little bit out of what happens here today, but you can't take a whole lot out of it. You know, everyone right. always asks how this team look against that team. You know, it's... Yeah, the proverbial grain of salt. Exactly. And, and you know, throw on top of it, trying to, you know, run around and try to see as many of uh, 36 different games as you, as you possibly can. You know, if you, you catch five or ten minutes of any one given matchup, you might be lucky. Yeah, um, you know, you guys are parked here and watching all the action in rink one, so you, you pretty much get five games here. Right. Um, you know, but I know that, you know, everyone's trying to run around and, you know, see the Pope Francis and the MCs and, you know, and, and all the other top teams that are here as well. So um, Yeah, and, and see uh, how many 30-odd uh, players John Missouri will suit up uh, today for Arlington. Exactly. Speaking yeah. of making final cuts. Uh, real, you know, real interesting situation with Marshfield um, that they had, um, you had Stoughton High, which uh, wasn't able to make it today. Um, number of skaters, they just didn't have enough kids available to, you know, for safety purposes. So uh, Danny Connolly actually took half of his team and dressed them in different jerseys and threw them out there against uh, Norton. Uh, I didn't over know one of the other rinks earlier this morning. Pretty interesting. So uh, the game you guys just saw against Burlington was probably his top three lines, and then if he had lines four, five, maybe five and a half, six, still under They were over there playing yeah. against Norton early this uh, early this How morning. How great so, is that? Yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, John McGuire told me they knew about that on Thursday that uh, that Danny Mark, the Stoughton coach, had talked to them and said, you know, this is a situation they have. It's just you know, yeah, Norton you, doesn't want to lose a game, right? You know, and, so. and you don't want to you know get your kids too banged up. Uh, you know, the first week of the season, you know, so, um, you know, it was the right thing to do. Unfortunately, they were able to come up with a good solution. Uh, but, you know, getting back to what you said earlier, you know, you got some teams, the coaches, you know, like to request that they play certain teams. Uh, you know, Arlington, St. Mary's is a matchup you see pretty frequently. Uh, you know, Reading, Duxbury, Burlington, Marshfield. And then, then John McGuire and his staff are very cognizant and knowing, uh, you know, the teams that might have only been here one or two years or coming here for the first time. You know, matching up strength versus strength. And right. You're making sure it's a, it's a good matchup. And, uh, yeah, you don't want a 5-0 yeah, exactly, blowout exactly. or 6 nothing. Exactly. You know, it doesn't do anybody any good. You know, it's you're here to, you know, get a good look at your team and, you know, against against your peers and uh, against a team that's it's fairly comparable to you. You know, it's it's not an exact science. It's not always going to work out that way. But, uh, you know, what good does it do if you, if you if you don't try to set it up that way? Well, I'm going to put you on the spot here because uh, all we've been saying is we don't really know much about what's ahead. But... Looking back to last year, you know, 
BC High walks away with a title, yep. and uh, Central Catholic over the last few years has been knocking on the door. Yep. Pope Francis is always there. I mean, there's always three or four perennials sure. in, in the Super 8 plus 2, and uh, those guys will be strong again this year. Yep. We took a quick look at uh, maybe the top 10 teams in the north and the top 10 in the south, and obviously it's a roll of the dice at this point, but um, there are some teams that obviously... Uh, come to mind when we want to talk about the season. Sure, and you know you never know once you get to this point in the season. Uh, you know you're still trying to sort out which kids you know came back to certain programs, which kids might have you trumped ship. We, we could do a whole program on that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But that's the reality of it th these days. And, and some of these teams they might not know up until like last Monday, when you know the first day of trials, they you know the, the skates at the ice and who's actually out there. I mean, it's yeah, just, this, this it's the reality of it. Uh, goaltender texted the coach, I guess uh, Labor Day. That he wasn't coming back to school. I mean, if they're lucky, they find out on Labor Day. You yeah. know, some of them were finding out, uh, you know, Veterans Day or right before Thanksgiving or whatever. So it's, you know, it's the reality the high school coaches are facing these days. You know, it's, you know, you hate to see it, but that's that's just the way it is. So, so yeah, so you know, this, these last couple of weeks are, you know, kind of getting a feel for it, talking to the coaches, and you know, finding out who's where and what's what, and like you said, who's back, and uh, you know, how many you know, of the 27 Kramer brothers are back at BCI this year. <laughs> I believe all of them that are still eligible are back. Uh, I, I believe it's, only, playing well I believe it's only three, but yeah, yeah last I heard Thomas. they were all back. They had uh, a good scrimmage with uh, the Lewiston, Maine, who's a pretty good power up in Maine. Uh, they were up there this past weekend. Um, you know, I watched a little bit of Pope Francis over here uh, earlier against uh, Malden Catholic, and they should be pretty solid again. Um, you mentioned Central Catholic, and, and they're kind of a wild card because uh, they'll have a new coach with uh, DJ right. Conti. You know, they had a, a great run the last couple of years under uh, Kim, but now that Kim's... Uh, you know, responsibilities with the Bruins are kind of increased that he, he had to step aside, unfortunately. And uh, so they'll, they'll have a new coach, and uh, we'll see, you know, what kind of maybe a different style they play or, you know, who's back from the, from that team. And uh, then it, then it's the public dance, and, uh, you know, who, who are the top publics? You know, is it going to be Arlington? Is it going to be Hingham? Uh, you know, Waltham, the last year's Division One state champion, are they going to be able to make a step up? Yeah, a uh, surprising yeah. run by Waltham, right. and credit yeah. to the... The coaching staff and yep. the kids. Uh, Burlington and Andover, who were in the Super 8 mix last year, obviously. Uh, you know, are they going to have what it takes coming back? Uh, you know, how good's Marshfield going to be last year's uh, D1 South champion that you guys just watched? Uh, you yeah, know, will we'll, we'll, and Wellesley. Yeah, sure. There will someone else step up? Duxbury, Reading. Uh, you know, there's a there's a whole host of public schools that are always kind of like right in that same boat, and it's it's you know who stays healthy, who gets hot at the right time of year. Uh, you know, and going into February, even in, even into March. Uh, you know, and then obviously you you, you, you get your other Catholic teams like uh, you know St. Mary's, Avarian, uh, um, St. John's Prep, who's not here, but they, they should be good again. Um, Catholic Memorial should be should be decent again. Uh, yeah, the, it, ca the Catholic Conference has had a little bit of a shift. Sure. I mean, BC High's always been there. St. John's over the last few years has been strong, but Malden Catholics had some changes, uh, yep. changes in personnel and uh, behind the bench. So yep. you know, and uh, that's a new regime over there as well. Yep. And you know, they they. Most of the Catholic Conference had kids leave yep. uh, earlier than than many right. would have thought. Yeah. So it's kind of a rebuilding, but uh, the plus side is those schools do have many boys, and uh, they all have three teams. They've yep. got uh, varsity, JV, and freshmen. So there are some spots that are filled from kids that were already in the program. Right, exactly. And uh, and, and you know me, I'm, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for Division Two and Division Three as well, and, and the girls as well. You know, I've picked up the... Uh, you know the girls range the last you know three or four years and uh you know keeping an eye on them a lot more closely now so uh so that you know you, you've got marlboro and latin academy out here you know two teams you normally would not see playing each other because uh you got one central mass team and one boston city league team uh so you know a very unusual interesting matchup on the d3 side and uh you know, you're kind of getting a feel for how some of that uh, that level of hockey is going to shake out this year. So yeah, it's uh, good. those those divisions, one of the big differences among the the three divisions is depth, and yep. uh, more depth is showing up at the D2 and D3 level. Sure. And, you know, the, the lower down, you know, I want to say lower down, you go, you get down to D3 and, uh, you know, one or two really good players is really going to make a big difference in a program. Um, I was watching Lowell earlier over on one of the back rinks against uh, Coil Cassidy, and I believe Loyal, uh, Lowell's um, all scholastic Thomas Hassett the last two years, I believe he's back for his senior year. So Lowell's had a good run. The so last you, you get years. a kid like that that can, you know, stay in, this, in the program all the way through his senior Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Huge. Makes a huge difference. Uh, talking to Jim Clark of the Herald and uh, in the slot fame, and uh, follow Jim on Twitter at in the slot underscores 
in underscore the underscore slot. Shocking. Yeah. Uh, and um, you know, a little teaser: the Herald's got a whole new uh, website that we're going to be rolling out uh, sometime this week. Um, so in the slot, it might look a little bit different. And it might look a little bit better. I haven't, uh, I haven't really had a chance to kind of play around with a little bit, but I'm, I'm intrigued by the, the possibilities. Um, but and, uh, and got, got a new red coat. We're, the we're new ready red to go. coat uh, will Brand be in new. the indoor ponds. Yep. Finally, uh, I want to give a little shout out to Shrewsbury, the program that has yep. has grown. Talk about depth. I mean, those guys yeah. skated uh, 15 guys the last couple of years in the garden and. And kind of took Eastern Mass by yep. storm. Yeah, and uh, they're moving up. Yeah, and that was always a sticking point with the Eastern Mass people because you know, you know, for, for me growing up in Central Mass, I knew the realities of way of how Central Mass hockey worked, and you just didn't have enough programs out here to sustain Division One, Division Two, II, Division right. Three. So you know, those programs kind of got lumped in Division Three, and obviously Shrewsbury had a great run, much to the chagrin of the old Rochester's and Hanover's of the world. Um, so barring a complete blow up and overhaul of the entire statewide system which you know maybe something that might some happen. people advocate that it might uh, be coming down the road here to you but it, it would it would take really having to rip the whole thing apart right, and, right. and start over again um you know whether it's based on and and you everyone knows hockey enrollment it's not really realistic to do something based on enrollment you really have to you know go by strength of program and yeah there's a lot of layers and a lot of factors involved um, so you just can't treat hockey the way they treat a lot of the other MIA sports. It's 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 so unique. So you mean hockey people are different? Yeah, we're <laughs> definitely people. You know, they're definitely definitely different. But uh, um, you know, so obviously you know, we saw why Shrewsbury was in D three. But you know, kudos to them for for making the jump and uh, going the independent route this year. And it'll be really interesting to see uh, see what they're able to do this year. Yeah. Good luck to Shrewsbury. Yeah. And uh, you know, if you get a chance to see Shrewsbury play, folks, if you haven't seen him play. It's worth your while. Yeah. They, they can play. Yeah. Well, uh, Jim Clark in the slot, we thank you very much for taking some time out of your very busy day <laughs> here. One of the busiest days of the year for it's you. Definitely one of the busiest days of the year, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's great. Like you said, it's, it's great shaking hands and seeing people yeah. again and, uh, you know, getting your feet wet again. And hard to believe that by the end of this week, we'll be, we'll be rolling for real. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And there's some, some great action in uh, December. You can find out the lineups of every team at MyHockeyLive.com, and we're bringing you all-day coverage here free today, but uh, the subscription program has already started, so get online at MyHockeyLive.com and uh, explore the site, and you'll see uh, just how you can get on board and see your team play this winter on MyHockeyLive.com and, uh, and see and hear a lot from the guru of high school hockey, Jim Clark. You've been called a lot of things. Uh, yeah. uh, Jim Clark and follow the red coat around the indoor ponds of Eastern and Central Massachusetts and Western and Western Mass. Well. I'm closer to some Western Mass rinks than Eastern Mass, so there you go. I might uh, I might be found out at the Olympia a couple times this uh, this winter. Not good just snack bar, a good very snack good bar snack bar. Yeah, we're gonna go back to uh, <laughs> today's two period scrimmage between Latin Academy and Marlboro High School, and uh, Matt O'Brien and Max Conway. Right now, there's about 6:45 to go in their second period. We'll kick it back to you guys now.